Just like his nemesis Shazam, Black Adam has endured a fun history. Lots of retcons and two different publishers that the character is called home. First created in 1945, he appeared in Fawcett Comics in the Marvel Family issue number one, and he would later return when DC bought out Fawcett and their properties, gracing their panels in 1973. While he's always been a particularly brutal antagonist, Adam has dabbled in some heroics in more recent times, but he also has a whole lot of blood on his hands. Like, a lot. So today we are counting down the top 10 scary Black Adam facts that you need to know. Let's get to it. In at number 10, his origin. When Black Adam first debuted under Fawcett Comics, he only appeared once in that entire run of Shazam Comics, who at the time was known as Captain Marvel in those days. He was an ancient Egyptian man back in his initial origin, named Teth Adam, which fun fact translates into mighty human. Anyway, he was chosen by the wizard Shazam to be his successor. Now the wizard believed that Teth Adam was morally pure. Oh how he was incorrect about that one. Teth Adam is soon corrupted by his newly granted powers, deciding that he should rule over the world. So he overthrows and kills a pharaoh, and assumes the Egyptian throne. This does not bode well with Shazam the Wizard, who renames him Black Adam and then banishes him to a distant star in the universe. Black Adam then spent the next 5,000 years flying back to Earth, arriving in the year of 1945 to discover that Shazam had appointed new champions, Captain Marvel, Mary Marvel, and Captain Marvel Jr. So of course there was a kerfuffle. And at number 9, he ripped a dude in half. Black Adam loves violence. The things he can do with his his hands are mind blowing. Like, not in a good way. More of a he'll rip you in half kind of way. I hope. There's no weird sexual innuendo in that. Ripping someone in half is something that actually happened in 52. The series written by Jeff Johns, Grant Morrison, Greg Rucka, and Mark Wade that featured 52 issues, once a week for a year between 2006 and 2007, depicting the events that took place during the missing year after Infinite Crisis. Do not mistake it with the new 52. Very different things. It's not like DC wants to be confusing or anything. Black Adam at this point has taken on the role of hero. I use air quotes because dude has a much more hardened perspective on how criminals and crime should be approached. In in issue 3 of the series, he gathers press in front of the Kandak Embassy, Kandak being a fictional Middle Eastern country in the DC Universe by the way, and then flies overhead declaring his dissatisfaction for the ways heroes like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman have dealt with crime in the past. Now to prove this point, he grabs Terra Man, a small time DC villain who is like a hardcore environmentalist, and rips him in half, his limbs thrown into different directions. Black Adam's point? Well, criminals like that guy don't deserve to live. I mean like maybe if he was someone like the Joker, like maybe understandable, but this guy? Nah. Anyway, this is a running theme with Black Adam. He stands by his extremist opinions, and he is very, very committed to them. And at number eight, Ah Man. Black Adam has had his fair share of retconning over the years, as we previously mentioned. His origin story was revisited again during the New 52, in which Billy Batson witnessed the beginnings of his foe's origins, which follows the story of Ah Man, a Kandaki boy who lived a life of slavery and abuse in ancient times. His uncle was Black Adam, who just was Adam back then. Adam would help the boy escape slavery, and they would encounter the wizard Shazam. It was revealed that the wizard had selected Amen instead, and during the escape, Adam had been badly injured, so Amen used his powers to heal his uncle. Amen wanted to use his powers to help others and cure his former slave masters of their evil ways, but Adam was like, uh uh. He wanted vengeance. Adam killed Aman when Aman attempted to summon lightning to transform himself, with his death happening off panel, but Adam calling it the boy's sacrifice, telling Billy Batson that he'd go to any lengths to free this world from those who enslave it. Intense. Kills his nephew who's a child. That's bad. We got some more murder coming in at number 7. He killed a yeti. In 2007 we got a tie in story from the 52 series titled World War 3. It was a 4 issue miniseries that explored what 52 was initially intended to focus on. That series kind of started to evolve into a different direction than DC initially anticipated. Now in World War 3 the focus is Black Adam and his uncontrollable rage towards humanity after his family was murdered, with the superhero community rallying together to try to stop his rampage. We'll be talking a bit more about some of the actions that he takes during that story later on on our list, but for the purpose of this number, spoiler time, Adam ends up being depowered by Zatanna and Captain Marvel aka Shazam. When he's in the Himalayas, now with a beard and long hair, he finds himself crossing paths with a yeti. And what does Adam do to this yeti? Well, obviously he beats it up, he yanks out its intestines, and then uses his intestines to rappel down a mountainside. I mean, at least he's resourceful. He's like, how do I get down this mountain? Better kill this yeti and use its guts. And at number six, 
He made death die. God. During World War III, Adam, while in a state of blinding rage, seeks the horseman of death in order to get his vengeance. When he finds death, who has been endowed by the power of the deaths of every human being on the planet, the two duke it out. But even death isn't strong enough to deal with Black Adam's powers and his sheer willpower and determination. Black Adam beats the crap out of him, interrogates him, and then smashes his skull into the ground, all while squeezing his fingers into his brain. They're in there deep. I have a suspicion that he just like really likes gooey things. Black Adam also knows how to pillow talk real good because he tells Death that he is going to spend the rest of the night slowly ending his life. Hmm. Speaking of Black Adam's fingers in squishy places, oh. in at number five, Psycho Pirate. Okay, so I think we can all agree that jabbing your fingers into someone else's eye sockets is like a really crappy move. Think about it. Obviously, you're screwing up the victim's eyes to whatever condition they may end up being, depending on your jab. But you are also the one who is sticking your fingers into someone's eyeballs, and that is a texture that I would personally try to avoid. Doesn't seem that appealing. Imagine what would come off on your fingers after you. But Black Adam doesn't give a crap. In Infinite Crisis issue 6, villain Psycho Pirate, who was working with Lex Luthor at the time, comes across Black Adam who has just been freed from captivity. He had previously manipulated Adam into using his powers, and Adam does not like being manipulated. So what did the anti-hero-ish do? <laughs> Well, midway through Psycho Pirate's attempts to reason with Adam, Adam just shoves his fingers right into the villain's eyes. But it's not just his eyes, it's straight through his head as well, to the extent that he pokes the villain's mask right through his entire skull and flesh. It, like a... That kind of that kind of movement. My favorite part about this though, when Power Girl asks Adam if that was really necessary, he responds with, absolutely. Just dead serious, absolutely. He's got a bloodlust. And at number four, he punched a hole through Terra. And we're talking the character, not the planet here, friends. Adam has a thing for punching holes through people. Like, this is a reoccurring trend. During the World War III story event, Black Adam had wiped out an entire nation, more on that later, so naturally a couple of superheroes had some beef with the magical villain. One of those heroes was Terra, who despite having a whole lot of confidence in standing up to the anti-hero now villain, she found herself probably filled with great regret in doing so when Adam slammed his fist right through her chest. Or rather, she found herself filled with great fist and ruptured organs. Ugh. Everything is wrong about this number. Moving on to number three, he ordered the death of a dictator. Execution time. Back when Black Adam was working with the Justice Society of America, they ventured to Kandak in an attempt to liberate the country. The country is being ruled over by a dictator called Assam Muhannad. After ravaging the infrastructure of Muhannad's regime, they find the dictator himself. So what is Adam do? Well, in JLA issue 56, he edges on his teammate Adam Smasher to murder the dictator, tossing the dictator underneath of the hero and telling him to execute him. It's worth noting that in the New 52, Black Adam's ties to this country are very important to his stories and his motivations. It was revealed in the JSA series that Kandak is the homeland of Black Adam, after, you know, the original retconned origin. And it was burned to the ground back when the magically powered superhero was protecting Egypt over 3,600 years ago. When Kandak was destroyed by a supervillain named Akhtan, his wife and his children were killed in the process, which is why Adam takes extreme measures to protect the city. But this caused Shazam to remove his powers and entomb him for centuries. Overall, there is a lot to unpack there with Adam. Speaking of his family, and at number two, he killed his wife. To call Black Adam a homicidal psychopath wouldn't be incorrect. Nothing proves that more than the time that he ended his own wife's life in Black Adam the Dark Age issue two, although he had his reasons, but we'll get there. So in the aftermath of all those disastrous events in the World War III story arc, Adam decides to chill out a bit, lay low, and get his wife Adriana Tomas back, who was currently deceased at the time. But he still carried around her bones with him until he found a Lazarus pit. Jackpot, right? Nope. Turns out that dropping someone's bones into a Lazarus pit to bring them back to life has some pretty bad side effects. Now, despite being reunited with his love, he realized something horrific was happening. Her body was slowly decaying. So in order to spare her from any more suffering, he killed her. Sure, it was an act of mercy and a kill that he claims to have committed out of his love for her. And she clearly wasn't complaining about it. But still, the whole situation along with how Tomas looked at the end, definitely something her eyes could have done without seeing. And finally, in at number one, he destroyed a whole nation. Like, no joke. I mean, we actually kind of hinted at this earlier on on this list. Now, as you can gauge from the rest of the numbers on our list, Black Adam played a pretty big role in 52, and World War III was his narrative. It's all about Adam seeking to avenge his family sick with grief. In 52 issue 45, though, he takes things a little too far. And by a little too far, I mean he destroyed an entire nation called Bayala. So remember how we mentioned that Adam was hunting for the Horseman of Death? Now, prior to finding him, his search brought him to Bayala. And in a fit of rage, Adam burns it to the ground while looking for death. 
blaming the nation for being partially responsible for his family's demise. He exterminates the entire population of 2 million citizens. Death would feed on all of the slaughter and get stronger because of it, but as we mentioned earlier, he was still no match for Adam and his grief. This would prompt several heroes to try to hunt Adam down and prevent his rampage from spreading across the globe, including the likes of Terra, who he punched a hole through. Dealt with her by deploying one of his favorite party tricks, punching his fist through her body. Full circle, people. Oh, Adam. At least he's consistent. All right, there we have it, friends. What are your thoughts on the new Black Adam teaser? Which is like literally a poster. <laughs> do you guys think The Rock will do the character justice? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know what you're vibing. If you guys liked this video, spread that love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more videos on Black Adam and other awesome comic book characters. In the meantime, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.